This kit has been really, really well looked after. Somebody for a long, long time treasured this kit. Oh, Morning guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today's something a little bit different. Maybe two years ago, a good friend of mine, Andrew, cheers mate, gave me this. It is from a, uh, from a deceased estate. Two full kits like this. He's a very accomplished photographer himself. He's taught me quite a bit actually over the years. He kept a kit for himself and he, uh, he passed the second kit over to me. Put it into storage for safekeeping with the intention that one day I'm gonna get it out of storage, dust it off and put it through its paces, see what we can get out of it. So this morning, I just thought I'd open up the case and show you what is in here. It's an Asahi Pentax Spotmatic kit. Kit consists of two Asahi Pentax Spotmatic bodies. There's a cold shoe adapter to add a flash onto. There's a Sunpak 7D flash unit. There is one Super Takamu 50mm 1.8 lens. One Super Takamu 55mm 1.8 lens. There is a Sun 135mm 2.8 lens. A 300mm 5.5 lens as well and the only information I can get on this it, it says Safari I've had a brief look online and unfortunately you type in Safari lens and everything comes up about uh, nipping over to Africa and uh, shooting the old uh, rhinos and, and big stuff that's not what I'm looking for there's a set of extension tubes which I probably to be fair I'll probably never get around to using there's also an instruction manual and a set of lens cleaning papers unfortunately the cable release is damaged I don't think it's gonna work cock the shutter fingers crossed one two three no, nothing. The spring has gone. So uh, that's no good. This kit has been really, really well looked after. Somebody for a long, long time treasured this kit. I'd like to put it through its paces and uh, see exactly why the original owner loved this kit so much. On one of the two bodies, his name's been engraved on the base plate. The shutter sound from this beautiful little camera <laughs> is amazing. It sounds gorgeous. The cameras do take a battery, but that only powers the light meter. But I'm, I'm not fussed, I'm not phased about that at all because uh, my intention is to shoot this like I shoot my uh, Bronica ETRSI. That is recording the light with a, uh, a handheld Sekonic light meter. That's a quick overview of what the kit entails. I've got to be honest, I'm absolutely fizzing. I'm buzzing about this, uh, this little shoot. I cannot wait. I've just got to decide on a location. I'm going to put a roll of Ilford HP5. I'm not sure which of the bodies I'm going to put it into. I'll take a guess and just grab the first one I fancy. Okay, so that's now loaded, ready to go 400 ISO film so I've just got to check the ISO setting to 400 that is geared up and ready to shoot let's get off and uh, try and find a few little locations I think the weather's garbage but we're going to try and make a shot with the Asahi Pentax Spotmatic love it so far it's a little bit later in the afternoon the sun's come out to play a little bit. Just come down to a local village with some beautiful old heritage buildings. For this wee shoot, I'm just gonna use the 50 millimeter, the 55 millimeter, and the 135 millimeter. 50 millimeter lens, F8, one one twenty fifth of a second. This is my last shot with a 50mm. <laughs> now there's another burner. Uh, what I'm finding, I really am finding this, uh, this shutter to be really delicate to the touch. You don't have to put much pressure on it at all to fire the shutter. And unfortunately that's probably about three shots pear shaped. But hey. This is not going to plan. The shutter is really, really delicate and I'm really struggling with it. I'm also struggling a little bit with the focus because the uh, it's quite dark in the viewfinder. Now this is the M42 screw mount. Off comes the 50, on goes the 55. There it goes. Beautiful. So this next shot is going to be the window of this settler's hut. Looks like an old Hessian coffee sack in the window. I have got a bit of a sore throat today, guys. It's nothing, uh, no dodgy bugs 
involved. Just a little bit of a bit of a sore throat, losing my voice a bit, which uh, I'm sure will be very welcome to a lot of people. All right, let's go F8, 60 for the second. Again, I'm just finding the focus quite difficult to deal with. I suppose if I open it up to uh, F2.8, I'll tell you what, let's just try that. Let's open it up to F2.8. Oh, that's a lot better actually. Get my focus at 2.8 and then stop down to F8, which is what I want. Should do the trick. I'm just trying to, just now trying to get away from the reflections in the window. A little bit tricky. Steady on the shutter, Paul, steady on the shutter. Beautiful. Now it sounds really good. The film's advancing, which is good. Everything seems to be working. Now here we've got this gnarly old fence with a very corroded chain on there. So I'm going to make a bit of a shot of that. F8, 250th. F8, 250th. Beautiful. And now the sun's come out even more. So uh, let's just check again, because that is quite bright now. That's F11, 250th. And that is, that is so much better with a bit of light on there. Beautiful. I like it. Okay, again with the old farm machinery. An old plow. We'll try with this little wheel first. Five six one one thousandth. Lovely. Okay. That is quite nice actually. I like that. I'm back to the old petrol bowser. And just because there's a little bit of light on it now. F4 one five hundredth. Alright, moving on, an old school hot tub, beautiful. Let's take a reading from the range, far darker in here, so we're going to shoot F4 at 60th. That sounds, oh, I keep going on about the sound, but well, that sounds beautiful. We'll have a shot of that. Five, six, sixtieth. And again, what I'm, what I'm finding myself having to do all the time is just be so careful with this shutter. Okay. Swap out the lenses again. This time, we're going to try the 135 millimeter. I did see a little review on this particular lens online, and it does sound like it's quite a nice little lens. Let's see what we can find. Mary, that is the old uh, telecommunications place, the old phone box. Keeping the 135 lens on, I'm just going to get a long shot of that little row of houses down there. All right, time to change out the lens again. I've taken a couple of shots with the 135, and although it's quite nice, I really want to do take most of the shots with the Super Takamas. Sorry if this audio is a bit dodgy guys, my throat is absolutely killing, struggling to talk at the moment. But hey, the show must go on. I'm losing the light faster than I'm losing my voice. I'm going to try and take a shot of that cottage framed by that there tree. Likewise, 5.6, I'm sure that's not the best photograph ever taken of the cottage. That red building there is the old schoolhouse. We'll go with 2.8, 500. I'm not actually feeling too flash to be honest, so I'm going to call that a bit of a draw. I've got maybe 9, 10 frames left on the roll, so I'll save them for another day when I'm feeling a little bit better. I don't know, experience of shooting this camera, mixed feelings. I feel like I've wasted so many shots, lining, lining something up and then uh, barely touching the shutter and bang. It, the shot's gone, uh, so uh, I'm expecting quite a lot of crap to come out of this to be honest. The ones would have been steady and I've been more controlled, more delicate on the shutter. I'm pretty sure I've got some nice shots out of that, but uh, on, on the whole, I don't think I've made a great effort with this camera today. Uh, the other thing that's slightly concerning, I seem to have shot more than 25 frames. Everything's turning, everything's moving as it should do, 
so the film's obviously, obviously travelling through the camera but I, I don't know, I'm a little bit uneasy about it. I should have kept uh, I should have kept tabs on what I was shooting. According to this, I've, I've shot 25. It's a 36 roll of film. I don't know, time's gonna tell. I'm gonna have to pull the plug on this, I feel crap. We'll catch up a bit later. So I'm back at the van, I'm feeling like crap, but I've gotta shoot that. And at last today, I feel like I've just taken a nice shot. Beautiful little bit of color. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's a black and white film, but let's just call it a beautiful bit of light. It's actually quite amazing what a little bit of light will do for your mood. And this, my friends, is a gorgeous, gorgeous bit of late light. Oh, I'm enthused again. <coughs> feeling like crap, who's feeling like crap? None of it, not a bit of it. Okay, the phone's still traveling which is good. The light's starting to fade again now. But hey, I managed to squeeze two, maybe three, three shots out of that. So, uh, I might just get back in the van, just chill out for a while. Maybe, just maybe the light might come back. You never know. Actually, that's quite a nice shot. Nice little bit of light on the brickwork. Is it worth a shot? No, I don't think it is. The light's gone now, but it was 250th at f8. This one was a 60th at f8. It's a few days later. What a beautiful start to the day. And the sun's just coming up. A few people at the ocean coming out to check. Excuse me. Voice is not good. Still feeling a bit croaky. A few people down the uh, down the beach side just coming up to check out the sunrise. So I thought I'd slip on the 300 mm lens and give that a little go. I've taken a couple of quick shots using the 300 mm lens. Well, they seemed okay. I'm not overly confident about the results of those. I had to work quite quickly. I'm not entirely sure the focusing was spot on, but we'll see. We'll see. I've decided to put the 135 mm lens back on. In the meantime, it's just nice to sit back and watch that beautiful sunrise. I'm shooting this with a 135mm lens. Well, that is the last frame guys. Let's go take the film out of the camera. So we're just going to wind the film back in. You just lift this little handle here. Oh, my fingers are like ice. A little button there in the base, you press that in and just rewind. And when the film's rewound, you should be able to feel it when the film's rewound. There it is, hit a little click, and now it's riding freely. So that is now fully unwound. To get the film out of the camera, you just lift up that little rewind handle, pull it all the way and it just pops open the back and that is one fully exposed, hopefully, film. Now generally I will develop this roller film myself here in the van. I don't have any chemicals left, I've used it all. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to package this up today post it to Auckland to the black and white box and those guys are going to develop it and scan it for me. Any day playing with a camera is a bloody good day. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed the photographs, hope you enjoyed the videos. Till next time.